There's a bunch of different ways that we can fade audio within DaVinci Resolve, and I kind of wanted to go over those different ways on each page, and that is the Edit, Cut, and Fairlight pages. So here we are on the Edit page, and if you don't see your waveforms down here, the easiest thing you could do is grab the bottom of that particular track, pull it down, and you should be able to see it. If you still don't see your waveforms, we can come up here into the Timeline options, and there's this little button to turn on and off waveforms. Probably going to want to have it on so we know where we're going to want to fade. From here, if we have this open far enough, we should be able to see this little uh, tool up here that we can grab and drag to add in our fade. Sorry about that. And from here, we would now be able to fade it in. As you can see, the video fades in, so we want to have the audio fade in as well. So that's pretty much how we would have that fade in. Now from here, we do have an option that we can pull this down and we can change the way in which that fade works. If we wanted to have it come in nice and slow and then speed up, or if we wanna have it go the other way where it comes in fast and then it kind of finishes off very slow. It's up to you. Probably I'd wanna do it something like this. But one thing that I do wanna tell you about using this particular fade control is if we were to go over onto the edit page, we currently don't see it over here. And that's just one thing that the uh, cut page currently doesn't uh, visually show, but it is one thing to, 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 uh, to note here. If we were to listen to this, we can hear that that fade is there. It's still there, we can still see it here, and we can still see it over here in the Fairlight page, but it's just one thing to know that you currently don't see it over there. Let's remove this quick. And let's go into the cut page. The cut page itself, um, if we wanted to add in a fade into here, what we would do is we'd come up to the transitions and come into audio. From here, we have a crossfade. We can then drop that on here and we can pull this out however long we want that fade to be. So now if we were to bring this back, we can hear that it's fading up. On the edit page, we can see that we can see it here. And by clicking on it, we have some options here that we can go in and we can change if we wanted to uh, change something specifically. Uh, we can also drag it here and that would be represented over here. And if we click in here and open up the inspector, we have those same controls here. To delete this, all we have to do is click on it and then just hit delete and it will remove that, which makes it super easy. One thing that I wanna quickly show you here is there's this little line can you see that little line right there? And we can see how our mouse cursor is changing. That little line right there, you see me moving it? That line is obviously the volume, and that's all a, a fade in or a fade out is. It's just the changing of the volume there. So if we were to, let's say, click on here, right? We could, uh, let's click on the clip itself. We have this uh, volume, and we can you know move this, and we can see that that little line right here is moving. And so they're both doing the same exact thing depending on where you wanna uh, work on it. So if we wanted to manually make a fade, all we have to do is come in, oh, let's reset that. We would just have to come in to wherever we want it. The fade, let's say here, we'll keyframe there and we're gonna leave that at zero because that's where we want the fade to end. And we can come all the way to the other end and we could either grab here and then we have our fade. We have our fade there, and we don't have to make this end so low. We can make this like negative 40, and it would be similar to the other fade that we had, right? We could do something like that, uh, or we could just come into here and we could drag these around as much as we want it to. If we wanted to make additional keyframes, we can also do that by holding down Alter Option and clicking, and it'll make a keyframe there, which then we could move around uh, as we want it to, right? So we'd be able to move these keyframes and click and make new keyframes. Um, if we wanted to delete a keyframe, you just have to have it select it, and then you hit your delete key, and it will delete that particular keyframe, um, just like that. So um, that's how we would go about doing that. Now, if we wanted to remove all of the keyframes, we can either double click on the name or click on the little circle over here, and it will re uh, reset everything back to where it was. Let's go over into the Fairlight page. On the Fairlight page, we can see that if we wanted to add in um, 
the fade with that little control we can we can see that it, it's automatically drawing out that that change there uh, which is pretty cool and that will be seen over here as well so that's a pretty cool option uh, we do also have the ability to come into the effects go into audio transitions and add this on to the end here but what we can see is that it's adding in uh, it's just moving that particular um, little um, fader control over and we can see over here it's it's adding that over so just having an understanding of how that works uh, in the in the audio world they're used to using this kind of a control over uh, just th throwing a, a, a transition kind of thing that you would typically see in editing so that's how that would work uh, there I, I do want to talk about, uh, and so that would work for uh, fading on and fading off. You do have that control here that you can fade off as well, right? I guess that would be a really long one, but... Um, but so you do have that as an option. So I quickly just uh, made a duplicate of this song. I wanna, I wanna show you a little tip that I use uh, for using fades and how it allows me to change the length of a song so that it kind of fits within what I need it to fit into. So this particular song here, there is a couple of different portions of it that we could use, but I like this little portion right in here. Let's look, let's say we just needed this beginning portion and we listen to just this little area here. Right, so right in there, right where it goes down, we could probably cut it with this end portion down here. If we take a listen to this. Right, so let's use this little end portion. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna use, but I'm just going to cut this here using the razor. Uh, and then we're going to cut this up here and we're just going to remove that. And now this particular portion right here, we're going to use, but we're gonna go over into Fairlight. Over here in Fairlight, let's go up to View and Audio Track Layers. So once we have Audio Track Layers selected and we take a look at this, what we can do is we can grab this particular clip and we can drag it over and we can match up our waveforms till we get something that kind of works. I'm not entirely sure what's gonna work here. So we'll just play around with this just a little bit. So I'm gonna say like right there, I'm holding down shift and we can see that now I can't move its position, but I can move it up to a different layer. So this is audio track layer. So pretty much how it works is it's going to play the bottom most layer and then once another layer comes up, then it's going to play whatever the next layer is, whichever the highest layer is, right? So if we were to listen to this, it's probably just going to sound horrible, but right? So instead of that, what we can do is bring this back a little bit and then maybe fade this from one to the other. So we're fading from this over into this. And obviously all of this we won't hear because we can see that this is fading down right to there. So that might work for an ending. So then once we're done with that, we can simply come up to view and then show audio track layers. We'll unclick that. And so this is what we see. Now there's, the clip is underneath this clip, but um, obviously sounds the same. And if we were to come over to the edit page, we can see that that's now here. The, uh, there is a clip underneath this one, but we currently can't see it. So if you are an editor, um, typically if you were to take, let's say another uh, audio, Let's close this and we push this. Uh, we can see that we're going under, right? Because this is a layer on top. But if we were to have two of these, whoops. If we were to have two of these, like you can see here, right? These are gonna be on the same layer and we move this one over top of that one. It's cutting that, right? And so it works a little bit different. Uh, but as an editor, if we were to do that uh, as an editor, this just looks like a normal, you know, single track. You could also, uh, render this particular uh, uh, mix down. We could, um, you have that as an option as well. So that's typically like something that I would use using audio track layers with that fade control you might find interesting in, in how to use this tool set outside of just fading on a track or fading off a track. We can also use to do something similar to this. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. Uh, if you do have any questions, shoot them down in the comments. If you do want uh, to, to learn more about this, I do have a whole course uh, specifically on audio. Uh, it's about 10 hours long going over everything in Fairlight. 
But uh, yeah, if you want some free titles, I have those on my website as well. Actually, there'll be a direct link in the description for those. If you're interested in those, I also have pre-made assets and other uh, courses that you could also take a look at. But with that being said, I am out of here. Thanks so much for watching. Till the next one, my name's JR, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good one, guys.